Hey you guys, it's Karen, and I thought I would talk about my year in health. I jotted down my notes here, um, and what I plan to do next year. So the year just gone, the various health issues, what's happened in summary, and what I'm gonna do going forward. And also this will kind of be a bit of a weight update. So the biggest thing in my life has been headaches. I've had headaches for 14 years, but the last three years have been horrendous because I've had a headache plus a foggy brain. And actually the foggy brain in some ways is harder to deal with than the headaches because all you can do is lie down. You can't focus on anything, you know, it's awful. So in 2019, I feel like I found, I can't say it's the cure, but I found a massive solution that works most of the time. Um, I'm having what I suppose you could call is a bit of a relapse at the moment. Um, and I don't really know why. I haven't been to the physio for quite a while, but I can't pay for private physio every week for the rest of my life. Um, but I'm so pleased that I found this solution. I cannot tell you what a difference it's made to my life. Like I said, the last couple of weeks I've had a bit of a relapse, but I feel like I can come through that. You know, I'm getting Kev to do the manoeuvre that the physio did, which is basically to, to reproduce the headache by pressing on the point in your neck like this. And then he holds my head and I push against it. It's really painful, but you do that a few times and it just sort of seems to clear things. Um, and also she's told me about my, it's even got its own little hook now, my neck cushion that I use. This has been amazing. I wear this if I'm driving long distances, I wear it if I'm a passenger, I wear it if I'm sitting at my computer, anything that is going to, you know, bother my neck, I wear that to try and avoid the headaches. And I think that has contributed to things being much better. What I need to get a lot better at next year or from now on is the physio that I'm supposed to do at home. But I think the problem with me is I've got so many different um, health challenges that I tend to focus on one and then forget about the other. And so my knees kind of got worse after my head got better and now I'm focusing more on knee physio and I've forgotten about my headache physio which is kind of you know turning different ways and stretching my neck um and i should be doing that for sure so i need to focus more on that um with my bladder as you know it's basically been worse over the last year but it's still not something that it's not something that upsets me my headaches upset me because they take away from my day they take two or three hours at least away from my day and then a few hours either side of it i'm miserable but with my bladder as long as I'm within reach of a toilet, I'm not in pain, you know. Um, what I'm going to do next year, my plan going forward, is to hopefully get an appointment with the consultant and ask him, I need to look at my records, my antibiotic records, and find out did I actually take the antibiotics that they prescribed me because I was prescribed long-term antibiotics and I don't know if I continue to take them. The only way I guess will be to see if I kept them on a repeat prescription. I don't even know if I can find this information out, but I know I was very anti-antibiotics at the time and I was a bit scared of the particular one they gave me. Um, I think I had seen a study on, I don't know how you pronounce it, Stephen Sorgan syndrome, something like that, and it was a risk on these tablets and so, I don't know whether I actually took them for as long as I should have. So that's something I want to look much more into. I need to work out the balance of risk between antibiotic resistance and these possibly working for me. Um, so I might see if I can make that happen next year. Um, with my knees, they have got a lot worse and they've, they've been actually really painful. I was saying to Kev, it feels almost like it's psychosomatic because they've been a lot more painful since I got my MRI results. However, it's not really that it's psychosomatic. What it is, is that since getting those results, I've I did physio, but I sort of overdid it with a physio. And when I discussed it with a consultant, she also told me that the physio program I was given wasn't the best and that it was too intense, that my knees are too damaged to do that intensity. So I think it's just taking them a while to heal from that. Um, but what has got worse is, you know, bending down and whatnot. So my plans for my knees are obviously weight loss is always um, my goal and that would help my joints immensely. I think that's probably the number one thing that would help. Um, I'm still using my KT tape, although it doesn't seem to help as much. It does seem to make it bearable. Like, you know, Kev is still golfing on a Saturday and I have to walk Watson and I can manage if I tape up my knees and take my full dose of painkillers. Um, and I just need to be more careful about bending up and down and, and don't 
bend up and down if at all necessary you know physio is something else that i need to do for my knees and i really need to go to the gym because when i go to the gym and use the bike it definitely makes my knees feel better because it tightens my thigh muscles and they're supporting my knees and i always am surprised at how much better my knees feel after doing you know the recumbent bike there's still a chance i might get um, an exercise machine in here because i feel like i would use it more i'm in a bit of a sticky situation in that this is going to sound ridiculous, but I don't go, I haven't gone to the gym for a few weeks. I'm just not motivated to do so. And I don't know where the motivation comes from. Sometimes I can go to the gym every day and I get completely focused on it. Other times I just go weeks and weeks without going. Um, and actually even Kev says, the minute you go back once, that'll be you, you'll, you'll start going again, you know. At the moment, the reason I'm not going is because I don't have any gym clothes that are suitable for this weather because all of my t-shirts are short sleeved and I the way that I motivate myself generally is to put my gym clothes on and then I'm like right I've got my gym clothes on I might as well go I need to find some long sleeved t-shirts I need some new gym bottoms you know I need kind of new gym clothes that will make me feel more like going to the gym and the only reason I'm going to go to the gym is to see whether I want the hybrid bicycle or the recumbent bicycle and which one to buy for home, you know, um, because if I was at home, it wouldn't really matter what clothes I was wearing, but I, they're expensive machines and I don't want to buy, I mean, I will buy a secondhand one, but I don't want to buy one and then not use it. Um, which for me at home, I've had a treadmill and I used it every single day. I only got rid of it to do YouTube, I think, because I needed more room for my lights. And then I ended up going to the gym and using the treadmill. That's my favorite thing to use. There's no way there's room in here for it unless I gave up YouTube. Um, I had a bicycle, which I did use after my knee operation. I did use that for physio, um, but then I was unable to use that because of my bladder issues because it causes me pain. Um, I got a cross trainer, but I only hired it and my headaches were so bad, I just couldn't use it. So, you know, I've had a few experience of, of experiences of having machines at home. And as long as it's the right one and one I enjoy, I think I'll use it. So that's my knees. Um, my hands are worse, I have to say. I've got arthritis in my hands and I've always said it's difficult for me to type on the phone. But I have found something that helps and it's the swipe facility on my new iPhone. That is making it much easier to type things. I don't have to, you know, press like that. Um, and it's sort of in the mornings when I'm noticing the pain in my hands the most. But that, God, that really has completely gone. That's so bizarre. I was told that that lump, I can't even remember the name of it. Was it Dupuchin's contracture? I was told that my fingers would eventually bend, but it's actually gone. Whatever it was has disappeared. Um, I can't believe that. It's the first time I've noticed that actually, that it's completely gone. I was told I would need surgery on it and everything. So that's wonderful. And then finally, of course, is my weight. The age old battle with weight. You know, I, I kind of laugh when I look at, there's a weight update on my channel. I don't know whether it's a public video, but from years ago, which is me two stone lighter than I am now, but with me saying, you know, that was me on a diet. And so, I, I struggle to, I don't want to keep on doing something the same, you know, I don't want to keep on this, we'll start a day on Monday, because that's just, isn't that the definition of insanity, you do the same thing and expect a different result, I've, you know, I'm always very keen to try something different, I have to say, I think the keto's working for me, and I keep on learning new things about it, and I've learned something new about it in the last couple of days, about the sweeteners that I've been using, that I don't think I need to count the carbs from them, which is brilliant because that was one of the things that made me think, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this because I thought I'd found these things I could cook with, but that pushes me over in carbs. Um, and I've also found a couple of meals from Marks and Spencer's that I can cook that are quick. So there's these chicken flatties and they do this cauliflower mash and that dinner together is lovely. Um, and they also do a pork salt and bocca and we make that with halloumi fries and that's quick and easy. Um, I have the, the tin of chili that I always had. I have that with cauliflower rice, that's fine and fast. We'll have smoked salmon and um, scrambled egg on toast. And I use one of those little live life low carb breads and that's fast so as long as I've got some recipes for the week that are fast I think that will help me to stick to it more um so my my plan for 2019 weight wise is probably more keto um today I am 
81 kilos. That last little update I did for you guys, I was 82, I think it was, and I was chuffed that I hadn't put on weight. I went up to 83 and I've now gone back down to 81. This is the typical, you know, yo-yo of my life, which I really need to avoid. Um, but my blood pressure is okay and whatnot at the moment and, you know, cholesterol's not too bad. So I think keto for me, but a healthier keto is definitely something I'm gonna explore more next year. Um, and I'm doing that currently. My plan is to do it up until the Christmas break. Um, I want to do more law of attraction next year and particularly related to sort of learning to love myself as I am. And I have found one small way of doing that and it is by wearing the appropriate clothes. And I think when I was at home, I was, oh, when I was at home, I am at home, but at home I've been wearing a lot of leggings and then a sort of longer top, but quite tight and it sort of clings to my tummy. Whereas I've just bought these, I've got jogging pants on today. Will I show you, even though I've still got a tummy, so I apologize. This is brave of me, by the way. <laughs> Let me get you back. I've still got a tummy, but I feel like with these joggers on and this top that is, although it's fitted here, it's a little bit looser here. It doesn't look quite as bad at all as when, cause you know, I have definitely got a tummy. When I've been wearing a tight top and leggings, it's just looked awful. And I think I'm seeing that then in videos when I'm doing you know, recipes for you guys, or I'm seeing it when I pass the mirror in the hall and that's getting me down. So finding these, these are super dry jogging pants and they're so comfy. And like I said, finding flattering clothing seems to be working for me. And I've just, this last year, I've, I feel like I've barely bought anything. The only thing I've bought are tops for YouTube. You know, I've avoided buying anything for going out or any more jeans because I just was like, no, I keep on changing size and you know, I'll buy something when I'm slimmer. Oops, and I, I just spilt pigment everywhere. <laughs> um, you know, I've always been of that mentality, I'll buy something when I'm slimmer. I have now chucked out a lot of the things that I was keeping until I was slim enough. Um, I had a lot of you know, really expensive woolen skirts from Hobbs, but I've been keeping onto them for years, keeping a hold of them for years. Even when I was working at the NHS, there was ones there that were a size 10, and it's like, look, you're so far away from a size 10 at the moment that hopefully you will be able to afford to buy some nice new clothes if you ever do get back to being a 10, you know. Um, so I've had a clear out, and like I said, next year I'm gonna try and buy more clothes than makeup um, and spend my money on that a bit more so that I can feel a bit happier. Like today, I don't feel totally embarrassed when the dog walker comes to collect Watson or when I answer the door or, you know, when I'm, whatever, whenever I'm meeting people. So that's my plan. Um, and that's my year in health, really. There's lots of other little things that have gone on, but nothing really worth mentioning. You know, like I do have problems with my elbow joints and my ankle and my hip and, and all of these things. I discovered that I thought my hip was dislocating. It's actually subluxing. It's called a subluxation. So it's a partial dislocation. Um, it was a physio that tested that for me. And she said, you know, it's not completely dis dislocating. Otherwise you'd be in a lot of pain, um, but it is subluxing. So it, there's other little things, but they're all manageable for me. I'm, I suppose I could say I'm proud of myself for the way I deal with this because I have had suggestions from friends, well-meaning friends, family, you know well, why don't you get um a mobility trolley or a stick or you know kind of and i'm really trying to avoid that i'm really trying to fight for as long as i can because i feel like i might just i know if i had a mobility trolley and i used it when i was shopping for example that it, it definitely would be less painful and i'd be able to shop for longer and then i feel like i would rely on that and that there would be no going back if that makes sense um and so I'm really trying instead to make my body strong. That's what I would like to do anyway. So I hope this was interesting to you. Maybe you are going through some of these battles, be it weight, loss or gain, whether it's health challenges. Um, let me know what your goals are for 2020 in terms of your health and weight, etc., and how you're planning on reaching your goals. And, you know, we can all work through them together in 2020. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching and thank you for supporting this new channel. This channel is new for 2019. And the point of this was that I know... If I did law of attraction or health videos on the other channel, they weren't necessarily appropriate to beauty. Um, and this is a, these are a bit more personal, you know. So thank you so much for supporting me and I will speak to you again soon.